Hello, how are you? Happy Monday to you. I'm Jeff Ponder Twarty. I'm the pastor at St. Mark United Methodist Church in Anniston, Alabama. Many of you know that. Not everybody does. So I'll just keep saying it. Uh, it's, it's a good Monday, and I'm glad we're together today. Uh, it was just funny, before I started this video, um, I was looking at it through the, uh, through the uh, camera on my computer here at home, and I hadn't opened up the blinds. I looked really orange. I mean, it's just outrageously orange. My, my shirts, the, the, the walls are the color they are, and, and my shirt's a little yellow, and the light that the, the light that my lamp casts and the light in the ceiling. Uh, everything looked orange, looked awful. So I had to open up the blinds a little bit and hopefully that helps a little bit. Anyway, uh, it just made me laugh. Uh, a little too orange today on this Monday. I'm gonna share with you from uh, 1 Samuel, Old Testament lesson, 1 Samuel chapter 18. These are selected verses. Now, these are several verses here, but I think it's very interesting to me. And I'll show you, I'll share you what I'm interested in uh, about these verses after, after I read this. So, uh, 1 Samuel 18, starting at verse 5. David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him. As a result, Saul set him over the army. And all the people, even the servants of Saul, approved as they were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the towns of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they made merry. Saul has killed his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. For this saying displeased him. He said, They have ascribed to David tens of thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day on. The next day an evil spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and he raved within his house. While David was playing the lyre, as he did day by day, Saul had his spear in his hand and Saul threw the spear for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him but had departed from Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and made him a commander of a thousand. And David marched out and came in, leading the army. David had success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for it was he who marched out and came in, leading them. David rose and went along with his men, and killed one hundred of the Philistines. And David brought their foreskins, which were given in full number to the king, that he might become the king's son-in-law. Saul gave him his daughter Michael as a wife. But when Saul realized that the Lord was with David, and that Saul's daughter Michael loved him, Saul was still more afraid of David. So Saul was David's enemy from that day forward. Okay. Um, long lesson, uh, but that's okay. Uh, hang in there, I guess, if you're still there. Um, there's rivalry we see and we hear. Uh, maybe a self-created rivalry by Saul. Saul, the text says, you know, an evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. Um, I'm of the opinion that King Saul... Um, not only suffered from low self-esteem, I think he probably was stricken uh, with some degree of mental illness, is what I think. And so, all the success that David was getting, because David was a good warrior, a great warrior evidently. So Saul took it personally and said, what else can happen but him come after my kingdom? 
And so he eyed David from that day forward. Um, I find it interesting that the first thought is, is that, well, it's a rivalry between Saul and David. I also think what ends up coming out is that um, the fact that really in reading this, I have to ask the question, why couldn't Saul celebrate David's successes? Why couldn't Saul celebrate the success of David? David did it to the glory of God. David did it really to the success and to the glory of Israel. I could even say did it to the glory and success of the throne of Saul. And maybe in that order. But Saul saw it as a rivalry. Saw it as, as David as one who was his rival to, to maintain kingdom, uh, his kingdom. And then, you know, he gives his, his daughter uh, to David uh, as his wife. And Michael loved David and still saw, 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 saw that uh, as a, a point of contention. And, 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 and all the more reason that he needed to distrust David. Who are we not celebrating in these days? Who am I not celebrating? Who am I more apt to, to uh, be distrustful for and see as a rival in my life? As opposed, as opposed to celebrating their giftedness, as opposed to celebrating who they are and what and what they have created themselves to be, or what they have worked toward and have succeeded in. Who who am I? Who am I not celebrating? This is a good question for myself. I don't celebrate people's successes. I don't celebrate what God has done in their lives, how successful they are, how good they are at things. I have no rivals. I have no rivals. At least that's what I, my attitude ought to be. Who are we not celebrating in our lives these days? That's the question. I think we need to. I, need, I think we need to celebrate people. I think we need to celebrate what they've done, the good they've done, the blessings they are, how they've succeeded at things. Celebrate their goodness. Celebrate their successes. Celebrate what they've become and how they have blessed people. Celebrate it. Say, God has done a great work in you. God is doing a great thing in you. I'm excited to be in your presence. You're somebody great. I'm glad I know you. My life is enriched because I know you. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Who are we not celebrating that we ought to in our lives these days? Okay, let's pray. Lord, we are thankful. We are blessed. This is a Monday. This is a day that you have made and we're thankful for it. Lord, bless us this day, and indeed, may your spirit inspire us to celebrate others and what they do and what they've accomplished and who they've become and who they're growing to be and figure out ways to honor them with our words and even so our deeds to, to bless them and encourage them further. We give you thanks, great God, for all your faithfulness toward us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we will talk again later. Uh, perhaps soon. Uh, have a blessed day. Take care.